grab your coat and get your hat. Leave your worries on the doorstep. Just direct. Pip, pip, tally ho, and Roger me with a prize winning marrow and bury me in a Y shaped coffin. Jules Guides here, in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts about this city whilst trying to make faintly ribald remarks. We're in Fleet Street here at the moment, but um, the reason why I'm being so verbose is because I'm standing next to the statue of Dr. Johnson, England's foremost man of letters. But we're going to be concentrating on a few things, starting over there with Australia House. I used to walk in the shade with a blues on the uh, This is the Australian Diplomatic Service, uh, High Commission. They actually used it for Gringotts Bank when they filmed the Harry Potter films. And they also did Wonder Woman in there. Today, I am with Ariel, all the way from Argentina. Hello, how are you, everyone? <laughs> Excellent name, by the way, Ariel. Oh, Were you named after the uh, spirit in Shakespeare's the Tempest? Tempest? Hast thou forgot the foul witch Sycorax, who with age and envy was grown into a hoop? Uh, this is the Church of St. Clement Danes, and it's called St. Clement Danes because King Harold Harefoot, one of those Viking kings or whatever, he is buried here. Harold Harefoot was the son of Knut. My friend is always calling me a bit of a Knut, C-N-U-T. Anyway, Harold Harefoot was buried over in Westminster, but his brother, who was called Half a Knut, had dug up his bones and chucked them into the river. And then some fishermen came along and uh, buried him here. It's the official church of the Royal Air Force, which is why we've got Bomber Harris here. He did destroy quite a lot of beautiful cities. You can still see the shrapnel from the bombs in the Second World War. I reckon they just left it there because they've got the same builder as me. He just didn't show up to finish the job. I mean, it only takes a bit of polyfiller. Look at that one there, that's massive. We interrupt this programme to bring you an important announcement. Please remember to subscribe to the channel by hitting the little red button underneath the screen uh, on pain of death. And uh, if you do, I shall be your best friend forever and ever, even when I'm 100. Now, William Webb Ellis, who invented rugby, he was the rector at this church. I think they were just playing football one day and he just decided to pick up the ball and run with it. And everyone went, hey, that's a good idea. Let's just call that rugby. Because uh, I think it was at rugby school where he invented that. That should appeal to you, Ariel, being Argentinian. They like to use their hands whilst playing football. On the hour, it plays the song Oranges and Lemons, and it's a song that children sing about all the churches. It goes, Oranges and Lemons, say the bells of St. Clements. I owe you five farthings, say the bells of St. Martin. And will you pay me, say the bells of old daily. And I think what it's referring to is the fact that it used to cost a lot more money to bring your goods ashore in the old city of London. What a lot of merchants would do is they'd sail up the river and they'd bring their goods ashore here, um, where it was a bit cheaper. And a lot of people would uh, bring ashore oranges and lemons. I'm not afraid, this robot. This is the Temple Bar. There's always been a little barrier here since 14th century, I think. It was in order to regulate trade into the city. This is uh, officially the point at which many London guides will tell you the monarch has to ask for permission to enter the city. But actually, that is what is commonly known as bollocks. What is it, Ariel? Bollocks. It's bollocks, <laughs> yeah. There's no real law saying that she has to ask for permission. It's, it's just more ceremonial. Uh, for some years, this was a beautiful gateway designed by Sir Christopher Wren, because he designed blooming everything in London. You can still see it. It's up near St Paul's Cathedral. Someone bought it for one pound and they, they moved it up to there because it, it was causing too much congestion. Fleet Street is one of the oldest streets in London. It's, uh, I think there was a road here 200 AD. It's the main ceremonial procession route from the Tower of London up to the Palace of Westminster. If you walk past these dragons, they're dotted around all over London and uh, it means that you're entering the old city as defined by the Romans, more or less. Bollocks is a very interesting English term um, because if you're describing something that's rubbish, you often say, that's bollocks. Oh, God, I don't like my football team. They're really bollocks, you know. Um, but if you're describing how good something is, you might describe it as being the dog's bollocks. So, uh, you know, oh, wow, you've got to go and eat at that restaurant over there. It's the dog's bollocks. <laughs> we only do it to confuse foreigners. Oh, that's uh, Prince Henry's room over there. One of the few to have survived the fire of London. I think it was built around 1610 or something. The fire didn't quite reach as far as this, and it was originally a pub called the Prince's Arms, but then it was later called the Fountain Tavern. Dr. Johnson and Dickens and all these famous people came down a bit. Um, 
my, one of my favourites is Samuel Pepys, who worked because he kept a famous diary of London in the 17th century. So the Fountain Tavern, and there stayed till 12 at night, drinking and singing. Mr Simmons and one Mr Agar singing very well. Then Mr Gowden, being almost drunk, had the wit to be gone. And so I took my leave too. I wonder if he took his hat as well. To take your hat and your leave, that's a zugma. I'm going to look that up when we get to Dr. Johnson's house. Do you like zugmas? I love zugmas. It's like when you use one word to govern two words in a different sense uh, for stylistic effect, or is that a syllogism? He left in his van and a hurry, or he took his hat and his leave. In the comments below, please feel free to use as many zugmas as you can. <laughs> I always find them very pleasing. <laughs> This is Bell Yards, where Marjorie Lovett's pie shop was, you know, the lover of uh, Sweeney Todd. If you watch my other video about Sweeney Todd, apparently the tunnel came under the road there and it, it emerged here at a pie shop. But uh, they also sell pies here in the Bank of England pub, but um, they're very good pies. This actually used to be a branch of the Bank of England up until about 1975, but that's a rather nice pub. Happy tune is your step. Sod it. They didn't want me to film. I said to him, um, what if I film with my mobile phone? He went, yeah, that's all right. And I said, well, <laughs> it's exactly the same as if I film with my camera. I mean, what the, <laughs> it makes no difference. But anyway, so I didn't buy a beer. There we go. Their loss. They don't seem to say a word when all these people stick stuff on Instagram. I walk in there and I to actually record them. Now, William Caxton famously brought the printing press to London, but his apprentice, Winken de Word, set up his first printing shop down there, some, somewhere in Shoe Lane. Since then, all the newspapers decided it would be a convenient place to start their newspaper businesses, and the first of which was the Daily Courant. At the entrance of all these little passages, as you can see little reminders of the newspapers that used to be around here. I love the fact that Samuel Pepys, Charles Dickens, Dr Johnson, King Henry VIII, Anne Boleyn, they've all been down this street and now we're doing the same. This is Dr Johnson's cat and I have to say, I don't know much about it. I don't know why he's here, but we're going to go and call on uh, Dr Johnson's house right now. He was kind of like an 18th century Oscar Wilde, a very witty man. Tis I. Hello. Um, welcome to Dr. Johnson. Excellent. Oh, wonderful. Celine is the curator who lives in the curator's cottage. That's such an excellent residence. Isn't it just? Dr. Johnson described himself as a lexicographer, which was a writer of dictionaries, a harmless drudge that busies himself in tracing the original and detailing the signification of words. A remarkable man. One of the most prolific writers of the 18th century and a great wit. He wrote many works, but he's best remembered for the dictionary. He lived in this house back in the middle of the 18th century. So it's a glorious home, open to the public, built just after the Great Fire of London. So back in 1699, most of it is original, including the wide floorboards and this stairwell. Now, it is said that he had some sort of compulsive disorder and he was known for tapping each of these posts as he moved throughout the house in order. And if he missed one, he'd have to go back down to the beginning. And Dr Johnson was very proud of having included every word in the English language in his world-famous dictionary. You're not staying for your prandestatory into a periludicule? We have tried to acquire over the years a copy in first edition where possible of everything Johnson ever wrote and he wrote a huge range of things but yes we do have a very healthy supply of dictionaries. <laughs> It was small in those days. Now, I hear that Dr Johnson, although he was famous for writing the dictionary, I don't know if he actually wrote the first ever dictionary. A common misconception. We actually have a huge range of the ones that existed beforehand. So this one on display happens to be the one that Johnson would have grown up knowing. Well, this one's by Nathan Bailey. Boo! <laughs> Boo, Boo for Bailey. Nathan Boo. Bailey. He had things like Rose, a flower well known. A dog is described as an animal well known. He's rubbish. No wonder Dr Johnson came along. So this is probably where Johnson would have spent most of his time, talking about all sorts of things with the great of London literary society at the time. Yeah, this is an extremely rare surviving original feature. You effectively create a huge door that is hinged and would slide closed, fill the frame above me here, so you've got a wholly separate room. 
I happen to have lost the dictionary you lent me. Can you give me a copy? Making a copy would be like fitting wheels to a tomato. Time consuming and completely unnecessary. One of my favourite things about being in this room is, is actually the floorboards themselves. To so think these are the very ones that he trod when coming up with definitions for dog and daisy and such. Subscribe. Thing that people who enjoy my videos should do. Bam! Bam your eyes! Oh, and these are the actual first editions. There are only 2,000 of these maids. Do any words still have the same definition in the... Lots of words would still be the same, but there would be plenty that were rather humorously described, such as pension, uh, money given to a wretch for, for treason to his country, no less. A politician, a man of deep contrivance. Perhaps that's not one that's changed over the years. I had a quick flick through this and came across this one, particularly for your patrons and subscribers. Guidage, the reward given to a guide. Fart, wind from behind. Love is the fart of every heart. It pains a man when tis kept close, and others doth offend when tis let loose. <laughs> There's one postcard in here which I believe they've been having trouble selling. Dr Johnson as a baby. So if you really want to make their day, <laughs> come to the shop and purchase one of these baby postcards. Jiggum bob, a trinket, a knick-knack, a slight contrivance in machinery. Oats, a grain which in England is generally given to horses, but in Scotland supports the people. <laughs> I like these. Jules, an excellent guide to London and somebody that you should employ to make videos for you. Brilliant, how did he know? And for a limited time only, if you utter the Jules Guides catchphrase, which is pip pip tally ho on the door here, you'll actually get a two pound discount. How good is that? A pint at the old Cheshire Cheese, I think. There was a pub here before, but it burnt down in the Fire of London. And so this, I think it was the first public building to open up after the Fire of London, along here. So many famous people have been drinking here, like uh, Benjamin Franklin, Dr. Johnson, Charles Dickens, Mark Twain. And what I really like about the picture up there on the wall is that the, the bloke in the picture, he's leaning on a table, which still exists. It's in the other room. You can go and see that table in the other room. I think they've got Dr. Johnson's flagon. The vessel with the pestle has a pellet with a poison. The flagon with the dragon has the brew that is true. It used to be a medieval monastery here, so you can see down in the depths, there's a sort of a labyrinth in here. It's got um, the vaults of this medieval monastery. Hey, this is cool. Can I hire That's this for a party? You can. Really? This is a folio edition of the great Dr. Johnson Dictionary, it's... here in the pub in Johnson's room. Members of Congress are always very interested because Whenever, apparently, there is a debate about the interpretation of the Founding Fathers' words in the Declaration of Independence, they consult Johnson's Dictionary because that's a record of the time, of the language that was being used, and they can see the subtle nuances of what they interpreted that particular word to be, even if it means something quite radically different 200, 250 years later. I think they actually used to have a brothel upstairs. There was a fire here, and as they were excavating, they uncovered some tiles that were on one of the fireplaces. These are really pretty pornographic, to be honest. They are now held in the Museum of London Archaeology, so you can't see them unless by appointment, but it's, it's worth making the appointment. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> it's embarrassing, isn't it? You're like, excuse me, can I see the porn? <laughs> Well, thanks for watching. If you enjoy my videos, don't forget to come for a pint here at the Cheshire Cheese and go and visit Celine and her amazing Dr. Johnson Museum around the corner. And most importantly of all, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you want a private guided tour of London, then feel free to head over to my website, julesguides.com, where you can find out more about me. And you can even leave a generous or not so generous donation via PayPal or become my patron, whatever that means. Um, or if you want me to make a video about you, or the, your institution, then uh, feel free to get in touch too. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Take a round.